What is this little thing called right here, Sharon? Well, that's a tabernacle. That's a tabernacle. What is this right here? Uh, <laughs> All right. You remember, Brother Ray, what is this right in here? The courtyard. I knew you'd have it. And what is this here? A fence. That's a fence to keep. And that fence is white. Now, I want to tell you two things about this. You got just one class of this the other day. What does this tabernacle and all this courtyard stand for, Brother Roger? It's a type of Christ. It's a type of Christ. Primarily, it's a type of Christ. Number two, what is it, Sharon? A type of the church in the church age that we live in today. This church age that we live in today. That church age. Okay, right there. This is a type of the church in the church age. The temple is a type of what? Aha. Uh -huh. What? It's a type of eternal glory, New Jerusalem. All right? It is a type of the Lord in all of His glory. Now, that temple is Solomon's temple. Solomon was a type of what? Solomon was a type of what? Solomon is a type of what? Sharon, do you remember? A type of Christ in his millennial reign because the wars have already been fought. The wars have already been fought. I know you knew that. And then the, uh, the temple of Solomon is a type of the millennial reign of Christ. Got Have a seat. <laughs> but the tabernacle is what we're talking about today. The temple is a type, number one, of Christ's millennial reign and the church in the New Jerusalem millennial reign. And the tabernacle is a type of Christ, number one, and number two, it is a type of the church and the church age that we live in today. Numbers and everything mean something, don't they, in the Bible? Number one means what, Brother Ray? Uh, deity? Number one. Oh, God? Number one. Unity. Sharon. Unity. unity. Number one is unity. One, Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Ahad. And that's, Ahad is, is one in Hebrew. One, singular. Okay? Number one, Lord our God is one. Two is a what? A type of what? Division and, and disruption. Two is a, is a type of division and disruption. Three is a type of what? Completeness. Completeness and the, what we call the trinity of things. The trinity of things. The trinity of things. Is... God, did God make many things in His triune, in His triune uh, likeness? What are angels? What are angels? Triune, triune beings. beings. What are they? They're, they're, well, they are spirit. Have, some have bodies. They are soul, and all angels have material bodies, but not as we know them now. Material. Um, they are clothed beings. Clothed with bodies. Now, many of your writers don't see this, but they are. You see, uh, some of them will have angels only do well in nature, but they're triune in nature. All right? Was Lucifer, did God make Lucifer in his image? Yes, he did. Wow. That's, that's something in it. That, didn't that shock you? God made Lucifer in his image. He was glorious. He was most powerful. Very powerful. And he glorified God originally, didn't he? For how many millions of years or thousands of years or days did he glorify God? We have no evidence of how long it happened, but we know they did. What was his job? He, he was a choir director. He had the most beautiful voice. And was he beautiful? Yes, he's beautiful. All of this is like God. Isn't that something? All of this is like God. Okay, so I have a question. So yes. I know in the beginning when God created the angels that they had, they had volition. Yes. And so that's where 
we have the fallen angels and you know the the choice that they made. But once that choice was made, they were sealed. In that they choice. were sealed, yes, so because they were adults. They were right. So is that where maybe the the theologians say now that they're duel in nature because they don't they don't they don't continue to have a choice anymore. It's, it's if they've already made it. But they are spirit, aren't they? Did the spirit of Satan go in the Nahash? Yeah. That's, the, that's the serpent in the garden, the Nahash. Does the spirit of Satan go in him? Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. Did the spirit of Satan go in Judas? Mm -hmm. Did it? Yes. So we have, we know that his soul, what does soul entail? Sharon? Mind the mind and intellect. Personality. Personality. All right, that's the soul. The spirit is that which energizes you, okay? But it has a lot to do, the spirit has a lot to do with what we are, doesn't it? The spirit has a lot to do with what we are. We're getting off on a little bit different tangent today, but they have bodies, material bodies. Those material bodies can appear and disappear because they go through different realms, different what? Dimensions. How many dimensions are there? Ten dimensions. How many do we know about? How many could we experience? Three to four dimensions. That's all. Those other dimensions are there. They're just as real as, as the other ones that we know about. But angels and spirits go between those dimensions. God goes between those dimensions. Okay? Goes between those dimensions. So let's look at this tabernacle now. All the numbers and everything. How many posts are here, Brother Ray? Do you remember? How many posts are here? Posts. On the outside. Remember how many posts there are? No. No, you're talking about the boards. Oh. The boards are in here. Okay. How many posts? These posts are made out of wood and they're covered with what? Wood typifies what in the Bible? Humanity. Okay. And they're covered with, with what? Material. No. In here they are in gold. But not outside. Bronze. They're brass. They're covered with brass. Okay, and brass is a type of what in the Bible? Judgment. Judgment. Okay. Now out here, around this sense, there's 20 poles here. 20 is two times what? Ten. Ten. Ten is the number of what? Divine order. Complete. What we call divine order. Complete divine order. So there's 20 of these here on the outside, and it's talking about divine order. And in here, when we come in here, we have a beautiful, this is all white. What does the white typify? Sharon, the righteousness of Christ. Okay, this is it. So some of you haven't seen this at all. And right here we have a, an entrance that actually stood out a little bit, out here just a little bit, and they walked behind it into there. Now this entrance here, what color is that? It's different color than white. Red. It's got red in it or scarlet in it, and what else? Purple. Purple, and what else? Blue. Purple is a, you know, all numbers, all colors, all metals are a type of something. Type of something. A type. A type is an imprint. In the Old Testament, there's similes. There's hyperboles. Are there not? Hyperboles. We studied on Sunday night, we studied about hyperboles. When the Bible says all, sometimes it's actually it's making an exaggeration for a reason. It's a figure of speech. There are allegories, metaphors, parables, and all of these are very related, and types, and riddles. All of these have a reason for that. Now, in this beautiful thing here, Christ came and he is righteous, isn't he? Why was Jesus born without sin, uh, Sharon? How come? How did it happen? Because he didn't have an earthly father and the sin is passed through the father. The sin nature is passed through the father and he did not have an earthly father, did he? Okay, now, where are we promised that in the Old Testament, Brother Ray? What? 3.15. Genesis 3.15 says, and this is it. This is very beautiful now. Genesis 3.15 says, 
And the Lord, Jehovah God, is talking to who there? Directly to who? Satan. Remember, how do, you, how do you interpret the Bible? Who's speaking? Who's he speaking to? And what's the subject? Okay? And that's the Bible. That's the way you do it. You study the Bible like that. People take and make sermons, topical sermons, and most of them are what, Brother Ray? Totally out of context. Doesn't mean what they're saying at all. They're just using the Bible to say something. When are you going to use the Bible? I say, I'm just using the Bible to say what I want to say today, but this isn't what it means. Okay? That's what they do most of the time. That's your topical preaching. When you have expository preaching, you preach from a text, and you teach a message from that text. Genesis 3.15 is the first promise of the Bible, in the Bible of the Messiah. And it's the first promise in the Bible of Antichrist. Is it not? Okay? The first thing that Jesus, Jehovah, says to Satan is what? I will put active hatred between you and who? The woman. And I will what? And she, I will put active hatred between your seed, which is who? The Antichrist. Is, is Satan actually going to have a child born like God brought forth Jesus? Yes. It's really going to happen. Can angels really procreate? Yes. Genesis, the sixth chapter. There's another thing people say angels can't procreate because Jesus said, uh, in heaven you don't marry and give in marriage as the angels are in heaven. What's the, what's the interpretation of the angels that are in heaven, Brother Ray? What are those angels up in heaven doing? They're the ones that follow God. They're not procreating. But according to Genesis, the sixth chapter, did Satan's emissaries, did they go out and start making Nephilim before the bad one would be born in the last days that we may the Nephilim this last Antichrist may be in the world today already he may be there this is Satan's son God brought forth a son didn't he God brought forth a son made of a woman not of man made under the law made of a woman made under the law so we'd have a redeemer and I will put actor hatred between your seed the Antichrist and her seed, Jesus Christ. And he shall bruise you as to the heel, or you shall bruise him as to the heel, but he shall destroy you. And that over here, in the, we're in the church age today, and over here in the tribulation period, that's when that destroying Satan will be right here. Finally, he's going to throw him in the lake of fire over here. Hell isn't in existence today with mankind in it. Did you know that? Nobody, no man is in hell today. They're in Hades and Sheol. And that is the place of departed spirits. Now right here at the cross is where Satan bruised Jesus' heel. Did Jesus feel the pains of death? Did he feel all of our sins laid upon him? Yes. Let's go on a little bit further with this tabernacle. Are you enjoying this? Young people, you learning something? Mm -hmm. This is a picture study. A picture study. Parables are a picture study. This is like a parable of what God is doing. Number one, we, this is Christ. Number two, that fence is the church in the world today. That Should the church look different than the world? Should the world see Christ in the church? Yes. Okay, and these uh, all of these poles here, and by the way, they have a tent stakes down below them. Stakes down there. What are those stakes made out of, Sharon? Do you remember? It's on the outside of the tabernacle. So what will it be? No. No. The tent stakes. It's made out of metal. What? Brass. Brass. Because judgment, 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 judgment. Okay. These are all made out of brass. Everything out here is judgment. What we're seeing is the judgment of God brought upon Jesus. Okay? The judgment of God, our sins are placed upon Jesus, and he dies, he suffers for our sins. Okay? We don't suffer for them eternally. He suffered for them. I got an email on the website this morning, and she said, uh, you said that Jesus went to Hades. I didn't think, and most of the theologians said he never went to hell. 
Hades and hell is two different places, isn't it? Hades is a place to ask about. And before, before Jesus died on the cross, Calvary, and before he was resurrected, we had a place called Abraham's bosom, didn't we? <coughs> and that was paradise. Why couldn't they go to heaven? Why couldn't these people back... In this period of time back here, why couldn't they go to heaven when they died if they were believers? <coughs> what? Their sin, hadn't been paid for. Their sin hadn't been paid for. It was promised. They had a promise. Has Israel ever received the promised land? The promise that God promised Abraham and Jacob? Did he ever? And David, did he ever receive that promise? Not in full. It's only a promise. Not in full. Not in full. Will they? Yes, in the millennial reign, they will. For 1,000 years, Israel will reign on this earth right there, and they'll be administrators of the kingdom. David, they say, the resurrected David will be on his throne in Jerusalem. And saints will come out of heaven, New Jerusalem, down to the earth at different periods of time. During that time, no unsaved, unglorified person or not even saved person will go up into heaven, into New Jerusalem. They have to be glorified first. No one, nothing unclean, nothing human will ever enter into New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Nothing human. And of course then, when we go into the eternal ages, we find out we're going to have a destruction of the heaven and earth as we know it today. Every man-made object on this earth will be totally destroyed. There will be nothing going to the eternal age that has anything to do with what man made. And that's a type of what, uh, Christine? We are saved by grace alone. Nothing we do, nothing we ever do will get us to heaven. It's only by the merits of Jesus Christ. Let's go back into this tabernacle again. The tabernacle had four covers on it, didn't it? Okay? And they're different colors. But right here we have this beautiful color. Now, even though Christ was righteous, these colors here represent what? His royalty. In Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, and around this tabernacle, there were flags here, there, there, and there. Four flags that typify the four Gospels and the, and the message of the four Gospels. In the north, all right, and that's the Marierites, and these, right around this area right here, you see these tents real close? These are the Levites, the families of the Levites. And right here in the beginning of this, this is Aaron and Moses were in this area, okay? And the, uh, the Kohathites, the Kohathites. The Kohathites means from, comes from the, the Hebrew word kahal. Uh, Roger, what does kahal mean? You remember that one? Kahal. Ecclesia. Ecclesia is what? Church. Kahal assembly. Now guess what? Now this is a dual type. These, uh, these Kahal right here, these those are the ones that ha handle the most holy things of the tabernacle. And that means assembly. And secondary, primarily, it is a type of Christ. Secondarily, what do you think that is? Who is in charge of the administration of God's kingdom today, Brother Roger? Well, the church. the church. We're talking about physical, local, visible churches. All right, true New Testament churches. They are handling the holy things of God. Okay? They're the ones that handle and, and teach the word of God. In the back part of it are the Gershusites. The Gershusites. They're back here in this area. This is on the outside still. These Gershusites... They, uh, they means a stranger there. A stranger there, that's what it means, a stranger. Hagar, the root of her name means what? Stranger or pilgrim, wanderer. Okay? Now these, uh, have all part of moving this temple, or not temple, but tabernacle or area. Down at the bottom here, on the bottom of each one of these, uh, uh, stakes was what? A great big pad or pillar or foundation of what? Brass. Judgment again. Judgment, judgment, judgment. 
Brass is judgment. The judgment of God is on Christ. Okay? The judgment of God is on Christ. And in New Testament churches, churches make judgments of them. We come in here. Now we have the, the pillars of acacia wood covered with brass standing on, on uh, brass or bronze down below. And on top of here, what's on top of this, Brother Ray? Silver. Silver. Now, brass stands for judgment. Silver stands for what in the Bible? It's a type of what? Redemption. Redemption. Our redemption rests on Jesus' head, on him. It rests upon him only. You come in here like this, and this, uh, this purple and scarlet and blue cover with all of these holy things on it, Jesus of royal lineage. What book in the New Testament, what gospel in the New Testament tells about Jesus' royal lineage? Huh? Matthew. Katamathion. Okay? And uh, that is the, right in the front here, I didn't give all of these out to you because right over here is a flag with a lion on it. That's lion. Lion means what? Royalty. Okay? He's the king. He's the king. The lion of the, king, uh, of the tribe of Judah. Jesus would come to the tribe of Judah. That's where his kingly lineage would come from. Okay? And on the front here, the three tribes that are there, they have this blue flag with a lion on it. And by the way, what does Aaron mean? Enlightened. In what way was he a type of the church, Brother Ray? The Holy Spirit. All right. The Holy Spirit dwells each and every one of us, doesn't it, as, as saved individuals. But it, it comforts the church and leads into church in an enlightened way doctrinally sound, okay? So we have them there. And the Marianites, here's the Kohathites, and then we have the Marianites over here. The Marianites, Marianites come from Mara. Mara, what does Mara mean? Bitter. Bitter and suffer. Did Jesus suffer for us? Yes. Now, there's a flag up there, as you see. I'll give you one of these after the class. There's a flag. What's on that flag? It's an eagle, and it's got red and white on that flag. The colors are red and white. What does white stand for? Righteousness. What does red stand for? Christ shed blood. What does the eagle stand for? Heavenly. Now, the Gospel of Matthew was the east. That's with a flag with a lion's head on it. Up here, we've got an eagle on it. What Gospel runs with this. What gospel does this typify? Brother Ray. With the eagle. The God of heaven. The Wombly. The gospel of John. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning kept on being Jehovah. Jehovah <laughs> kept on being in the several part of the Godhead. Kahlogo Sarks again. Is that, what does that mean, Sharon? Um, the word, the word question, Okay, the word, the Jehovah, flesh he became and dwelt among us. That's the Gospel of John. tells us that this is deity that walked in flesh. That he is truly man, but he's truly God. Now let's go over here with the Koth, for the, uh, the Gershonites, the Gershites. Now, they had a golden flag, and on that flag was a calf or a bull. What does that represent? Which Gospel is that? Which one is our servant? The animals are our servants, aren't they? That's the gospel according to Mark. The servant, the son of man. Okay? He came to seek and to serve. All right? Jesus said, come unto me, I'll, give, I'll make your burden light. You pull with me. So that's Mark. It's Manasseh, Ephraim, and Benjamin. And these are Rachel's children. The one that Jacob loved. They're the ones in the back of the tabernacle. And then, of course, the Kohathites. The Kohathites has a red flag with what on it? With well, a man's head on it. Now, what gospel is that? Luke. Okay. Marilyn, what was Luke? What was he? What was his occupation? A doctor. He was a doctor of, and a physicist and a scientist of the day. Okay. Now, the head of the man, here we have the son of woman. 
we have the Son of Woman, and he tells us that he was really a living, a living, breathing person, that he actually died, and he was certified as dead, that he was in the grave for three days, and he certifiably was raised out of the grave. So that's the Gospel of Luke. Do you see these four Gospels now? These are the people around. How many of you have studied the flags before? As far as I know, I'm the first one that ever did this. Since I did it and put it out on the Internet, I have people copying it all over the place, which is all right with me because it's got truth in it. That's We need to, to present the truth. When you first come in here, right here the first thing you come to is what? And this is really weird. This is a weird thing that we don't understand. What is the first thing you come to when you come into that courtyard? An altar. An altar. What kind of an altar? <coughs> what? It's a, it's a sacrificial altar which typifies what? Everybody that gets in Christ must accept Jesus as their sacrifice, okay? But what is the altar made out of? What is the bottom material of that altar, Brother Ray? Wood. wood. Would you make an altar out of wood if you're going to burn something on it? Don't make sense, does it? Does it? But what does it typify? That Jesus is our sacrifice and he is human. The flag with a man on it. Okay, that he is human. He is really flesh and blood. And then it has what over that wood? It's everything over that wood is what? Brass. Brass. Judgment. No gold yet. No gold yet. Judgment. Okay. What is gold of type of? Young lady, you know what the gold is type of? You ever heard of that before? Gold? How about it, Schrader? What's gold? Um, it's a type of what? Eli. Young lady? How about you, young lady? What is gold yeah, a type of? Remember, I don't Mary Lynn. What's the type of? Divinity. divinity. Gold is a type of divinity. We haven't got to the divine person yet. But we're going to. Here, all we're doing is seeing Jesus at our sacrifice. And there was a ramp up there. Why didn't it have stairs up to this thing? By the way, this, this altar was seven and a half feet by seven and a half feet and four and a half feet high. So you had to go up to it, but it went up by ramp and not stairs. So they see their, their, their feet. These guys, these priests, had clothes on and they went right down to the ground. And what did they wear on their feet, Sharon? Nothing. 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 They were barefooted. What did God tell Moses when he was standing there at the burning bush? What kind of bush was it? What kind of bush was this? Huh? What kind of bush was it? A blackberry bush. And that blackberry bush was burning. That's what it says in Hebrew. It's a blackberry bush. Not a thorn bush. It's a blackberry. Actually, blackberry bushes have lots of thorns on them. What does Sinai mean? It was up on Mount Sinai. What does Sinai mean? Bush. It means the mountain with brambles and blackberry bushes all over it. That's what it means. The thorny mountain. Okay. Did you learn something? What was a burning bush? A blackberry bush. A blackberry bush. Do, shoot, do normally blackberry bushes burn? No. Now, the Mount Sinai where St. Catherine's is, where some of the oldest, one of the oldest Bibles in the world was ever found, an old, old library of complications. What's up there? What did they have in their courtyard up there on Mount, Mount, Mount Sinai? Do you remember what's up there? Brother Roger. Blackberry bush. A blackberry bush. They said that this blackberry bush is the bush that Moses saw burning still, or one of the descendants of it. I think that's actually the Mount Sinai. There's, a, there's a like 26 Mount Sinai, by the way. But I think that's the real one. So we have this seven and a half by seven and a half by four and a half foot sacrificial altar that's made out of wood, but it's covered with brass, and this is where they make the whole burnt offerings and all of that. And it's wood, but the wood stands for the Christ, our Savior, that is literally human. Well, now we come to the yes, brother. Ray. I'm looking at something I don't know how true it is. When the sacrifice is put into the altar. Is it true that the priest cannot see the actual burning of the sacrifice? 
It's down below. Down below. Yeah, it's, they put it up there, and it, and then God devours it. God devours it. And what's the point? Is there any significance to them not seeing it being down deep, sacrificing that? But it was down on the altar, on the grate, and the grate's made out of what? Everything on the altar made out of brass, which means what? Judgment again. Okay? Now they walk up there, and they walk up on a ramp so they cannot see their ankles. No nakedness can stand before the judgment of God. But Jesus was naked, wasn't he? On the cross of Calvary? Totally naked. Well, what's different about between him and us? That he is perfect man. We're not. We're sinful. We're sinful. Even these priests were sinful men. Now let's go to the labor. The labor is made out of what, Brother Ray? Gold? Brass. 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 Where did the brass come, Sharon? I mean, uh, Christine? All that jewelry. No. Oh. Where did the brass come from? Mirrors. Where, Marilyn? The mirrors. The mirrors or looking glasses. The looking glasses. It came... It was, the, the bronze all or bronze uh, laver was made out of looking glasses. And what do you do when you look in the look, looking glass? You see yourself as you are. You see yourself as you are. Remember, there was a guy named Narcissus. 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 You remember who Narcissus was? Who was Narcissus, Sharon? Um, he was a, a guy who founded the founded the Greek Orthodox Church. He fell in love with his own, with himself. This is what you call a narcissistic person. When somebody is narcissistic, it means they're in love with themselves. They're in love with themselves. And narcissist sat there by the river, watching his reflection in the river until he what, Brother Roger? He died, starved to death, looking at himself. Okay, there's a little Greek mythology as you go. This, this laver made out of bronze that was made out of the looking glasses of the women. They gave up their looking glasses to make this. Did you learn that today? Did you learn that today? That's something. And what does this, what happened at this labor? What happened here? What did they do with it, Brother Roger? Well, they had to immerse themselves completely. Okay, the first time the priests were immersed, dipped. And then the second time, they had to wash themselves, their hands and their feet and their face and everything, before they went in to serve inside the tabernacle. All right. And that stands for what? Was Jesus baptized? Yes. Okay, now, you can be saved without baptism. Baptism does not save you. You're in the courtyard once you've had the sacrifice. But if you want any blessings beyond that, and that's what we're going to go right into in this church, the church, into the into God's eternal purpose. Where do you go in and serve the Lord, Brother Ray? The local, physical New Testament church. That's where you serve the Lord. Okay? Now, there are five pillars right here. Do you see this? Now, this is the type of Christ. This is the type of the saved people that are saved. All of these in here are in Christ. They're saved. They all look different than the rest of the world. They come to the sacrificial altar. You're born again. You're saved by the, by the sacrifice of Christ, okay? And then there are five pillars. The five pillars, they're, piece, they're pieces of wood. And what kind of wood is that? All this is made out of what kind of wood? Acacia wood, which is, a, which is like redwood or cedar, which does not rot, does not decay. Jesus was flesh, but would he have ever died? No, because he, he had no sin nature in him. He had no infection of Adam's blood in him. The blood of a child does not come from the mother. It comes from the father. Not one drop of the mother's blood goes into the child. And the blood is where the infection of sin is. It comes from the father. These five pillars in the front are made out of five pillars of acacia wood. Okay? Five pillars of acacia wood. They're wood. But what are they covered with? What are they covered with? Pure gold. That means that Jesus was what? He's, he's man, but he's divine. And pure gold. And what are they standing on? What are they standing on? They're standing on pillars or sockets of what? 
What? Brass. Brass. Wait a minute. This is the, we're going there. This is very confusing. All right. To go in here, to go into the t church, and the first room in here is a type of the church in the world today. See that room? Okay. That's a type of the church in the world today. And in that room, you go through here, and you've got these five pillars, and they're standing on bronze. Now, when you go baptism into the church, what what happens in a New Testament church, Brother Ray? What do you say when somebody comes forward for baptism in church member? It's judgment. The church makes a vote on it. They make a vote on it. But they vote on it. And what do they say up there in your little church when somebody comes forward from baptism and church membership? What do you say? I make a motion that after baptism, that full, full rights what? Full rights, and privileges. full rights and privileges church membership after baptism, and we'll give you the right hand of church fellowship. Okay? That's a judgment, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's how you get in here. And inside of there, let's look and see what's inside. To the right is what? Huh? To the right is a table of showbread. It's 36 by 18. 36 by 18. And 27 inches high. Okay? 36 by 18 and uh, 27 inches high. And on that table are 12 loaves of bread. Those 12 loaves of bread primarily stand for what? The 12 tribes of Israel. But was Jesus the fulfillment of the 12 tribes of Israel? Was he the messianic the Messiah that was promised? Yes. And on that table we have bread. And what else do we have on that table? We have dishes for what? Wine. Incense. Dishes for incense. And we have cups or bowls for wine. Okay. Now, in the New Testament church today, we have two ordinances, don't we? What are they? Baptism. Baptism and the Lord's Supper. Jesus, before the day of Pentecost, instituted the Lord's Supper in his church. Before the day of, day of Pentecost, would the church baptize anybody? Thousands. Okay? Before the day of Pentecost, did the church have a treasurer? Yes. Before the day of Pentecost, did the church have a clerk? Before the day of Pentecost, did the church vote? Yes. Now they did. They voted. They carried on business meeting. All this happened before the day of Pentecost. What happened on the day of Pentecost is the church was empowered by the Shekinah glory of God to carry out the gospel. Okay? To carry it out. Here we have, in the church we have the Lord's Supper, and the Lord's Supper is made up of two elements. Unleavened bread, which is on there, and wine, which is on that table. Okay? And then straight ahead is an altar of incense. An altar of incense. Now this altar of incense is 18 inches by 18 inches. 18 inches by 18 inches. And it's made out of what? Acacia wood. And this other table in here is made out of acacia wood and covered with pure gold. See, in the church, Jesus is pure gold. He is deity. And you are have deity residing in you and the Holy Spirit and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Right over here, now if you really want to get serious in prayer, this is the place for prayer, and they burned a special incense in here. That this is very, very, very important. The, this incense that they burned in here, this mixture of incense, Brother brother Roger, could they duplicate that and burn that in their homes? If you want to die. Yeah. You don't take and make facsimiles of God's churches any place. What happened when those boys of, of Aaron burned strange fire on that altar? They got, fired up. they got fired up. They were killed. Lightning struck them dead. This is how serious God is about his churches, true New Testament churches. And we find a lot of churches out there in the land, and most of them are doing what? Preaching some other gospel. A gospel. Preaching a different gospel. Well, God made sure that this gospel and this message and the prayers of the saints are 
not polluted in any way and not burned in people's homes. And over here to the left is a candlestick. It's three foot six inches tall. And it's made out of pure gold. Probably about 1,500 ounces. We know it's 1,500 ounces ago. 1,500 ounces. What does that 1,500 represent? Do you think, Sharon? The New Jerusalem. That's 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. And the streets are paved with gold. And in that city is what? There is no sun. The city is the light of, in that city is the light of God. The Lamb is the light thereof, it says. And in here, they cannot see in this thing because it's, it's totally dark in this place. There's no light in here. The only light there is in here is what light comes from the candlestick, which represents the Holy Spirit in God's churches. Now, on the outside, on the outside of this, there are four covers for it, four covers. The first one is uh, inside that you see inside only. That one is red, blue, and purple. Inside the church is where you see the pure beauty of God's Word and who Jesus is. The world doesn't see that. The next covering is what, Brother Ray? You remember? The next cover, white. It's white. The next cover is white, which stands for what? The righteousness of Christ. The next one is red, which stands for what? The blood of Jesus Christ. The church is bought with the blood and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And he was the right heir. He was the king of glory. And number four, that's what the world sees. What color is that from, Brother Ray? What color is that? The brown one. It's brown on the outside. What does that represent? It represents the humanity of Christ. That he was not, they didn't see anything special in him. And the church, the humanity of those in the church that represent basically nothing except the world. The real true but churches in the world are very humble. Very humble. And what were these skins made out of? This is made out of skin. Do you remember what these skins were, Brother Roger? Porpoise skins. And a porpoise is a type of what? The resurrection. Beautiful, beautiful. And there's 48 boards in this thing. 48 boards. 4 times 12 is 48. How many apostles were there? 12. How many, how many tribes were there? 12. How many elders are there leading out in the worship in heaven? 24. 12, 12, and 24 makes what? 48. How many boards are there around this holding up the tabernacle? The boards are made out of acacia wood. And what else? They're covered with pure gold. And they stand on what? Sockets of silver. The righteousness of Christ. And that represents all. And 12 is what? 12 means what? Perfect governmental order. Twelve apostles, twelve tribes, twenty-four elders. Perfect governmental order, forty-eight. Isn't that beautiful? Forty-eight. There's forty-eight boards in all. Twenty on each side, six in the middle, and two corner boards. Six is the number of what? Man. All right. Number one is the number of what? Unity that holds it together. And this little, this little place right here, this little square room, it should be totally square because it's 15 feet by 15 feet by 15 feet. How big is the New Jerusalem? 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. Now, in there, there are pillars that go from here into there. All these pillars are, are of acacia wood. Covered with pure gold and standing on what kind of sockets? Silver. Because now we're going to heaven. Nothing in this room describes anything in the world. This is heaven alone. Heaven alone. And inside of there, there is a box that's fit, that is 45 inches by 27 inches. 45 by 27 by 27 inches high. And there is all the glory of God residing in it. 
in that box. It's got box is made out of acacia wood, and it's covered with pure gold, and then it has a lid on it that is all pure gold, and on that lid is what? Two cherubims. Cherubims are an order of angels. What order of angels was Lucifer from? He's a cherubim. And what's the difference between a cherubim and a seraphim and an archangel? He has wings. Cherubim have wings. And these cherubims are witnesses. And they stand over the ark is here, the long, the 20, the, the 45 inches like this. They're standing looking at each other like this with their wings out touching above that. And down below there, it's called the kafar, the covering or helosmos, helosterion in Greek in the New Testament. That means the mercy seat. This is where they, God met mankind. And these angels were witnesses, witnessing everything that God did. Every time that their sins were forgiven, the angels witnessed it. When you're conceived into this world, there are two angels that, that witness your conception. There are two angels that witness your birth. There are two angels that witness your new birth, if you're born again. And two angels that carry you into heaven. Now, if you're not saved, these, these angels will witness against you. They'll witness against you. Go on a little bit further. And this 15 by 15 by 15 represents New Jerusalem. Now, there wasn't any light in here at all, was there? It's totally separate from the other. There's no light in here. Where is the light for the priest to see? Where's the light? It's shining like the gold. It is the Shekinah glory of God. The glory of God is in there. By the glory of God we see that the city in New Jerusalem has no light for the Lamb thereof is the light. And it's lighting the whole world. Is this beautiful? Mm -hmm. These little, these little, this little story the altar of incense. Now let me read you something from the book. We could go in here a lot more. But let me read on page 108. It's talking about rewards. Another example of this is found in Exhortation to the Hebrews. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. Was Esau a fornicator? Was he a profane person? Yes, he was all these things. And he was not God's pick, was he? Even though Isaac picked him. Isaac tried to bless him. God had to blind that man so he wouldn't bl bless the wrong man. And Rebecca had to stand in the way, didn't she? She had to hold up the banner of God instead of Isaac. And he's a patriarch, but he's a failure. Esau, who for one morsel of meat, sold his birthright. That word meat there is not meat, is it, Brother Ray? What was it that he sold his birthright for? The cheapest commodity in Israel, or Palestine, or Canaan. That was lentils. The cheapest thing you can buy. Beans, you know. They're a bean type of a bean. A little flat bean. For you know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, so he sought it carefully with tears. Hebrews 12, 16, and 17. Why was the ancient incident of Esau and Jacob recited by the writer to the Hebrews? It was recited again in the last book of the Old Testament, wasn't it? Right in the first verses of the book of Malachi, it says what? Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. Who's on the throne of Israel when Jesus was born? A descendant of Esau, not Jacob. That's Herod. These Hebrews knew the story well and were also well acquainted with their birthright privileges of firstborn in Israel. Why is the selling of the birthright of Esau by Israel brought to the attention of the Hebrew Christians? They were under the New Testament economy and no longer under the Mosaic laws and customs. God wanted them to know that they were in danger of losing eternal rewards if they acted like Esau. Prefigured in the birthright privileges. They had only to make the proper comparisons to arrive at the truth. It is well that a comparison of birthright privileges be made with Christian privileges. The Lord calls us wheels in the New Testament. What's wheels mean, Sharon? Heirs. Heirs of God. Heirs of God. Wheels. Not techno, not being born sons, but he calls in the New Testament church his wheels. 
The birthright privileges be made with the Christian privileges. There are some marvelous New Testament truths illustrated most graphically, and if grasped by the believer, helps him to better understand to a better understanding of the Christian privilege and reward. Privilege and reward. In First Chronicles 26 and 10, the fact that the essential idea of being firstborn is priority of rank, not accident of birth, is shown clearly in First Chronicles 26:10. The word birthright is in the text of Hebrews, plural, is prototokia, prototokia, prototokon, the first birth, the first born. Noodle pearl. Also in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the word birthright used in Genesis 25, 31 through 34 is a plural term. This indicates that the blessings of the birthright is plural, many blessings. Jacob sold, or Esau sold his birthright to Jacob for a simple, the most cheapest commodity because he was hungry. Esau inherited that God in his belly from his daddy, didn't he? Why did Esau, or why did Isaac love Esau so much? Because he liked the food he cooked for him. Not what he did, but he liked it. He was a glutton. The rights of the firstborn in Israel involve three things. The position of authority and family affair, Genesis 27, 37, 43, 33, 48, 14, 17, and 19, and 1 Samuel 20, 27, and 29. The family priesthood service after the death of the firstborn in Egypt who were not behind the blood, God claimed all the firstborn of Israel from that time on. They were special dedicated group. Later, the rights of the priesthood and Israel's public worship was given to the tribe of Levi. The patriarch system was set aside, but still in each family there was an heir. I want you to understand. The, the patriarchal system was set aside. And Jesus, when he took the, the, the Passover, the Hasador, and he took it from the Jewish family, which kept on representing this. Each Jewish family has this Hasador. They have this Passover in each Jewish family. But he took it away from them, didn't he? And he gave it to the church, from the family to the church, from the family to the church. The family priesthood of the firstborn of Israel, even though the service of the temple was exclusive of only the Levites, they still had this double portion. Now let's go to uh, Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17. And that's where we'll finish for today. If a man has two wives and one, the one loved, see, Jacob had four wives, didn't he? How many did he want, Sharon? One. one. How many did he get? They were forced upon him, weren't they? They were forced upon him. If a man has two wives, one loved and the other unloved, that has hated, you know, and both the loved and the unloved one have borne him sons. If the firstborn son belongs to the unloved, then it shall be in that day that he wills, that he gives his will. What he has to his sons, he cannot make the son of the loved one, the firstborn before the son of the unloved, who is the firstborn. Remember who Jacob's firstborn was? Reuben, see a son. But because of what he did, God set him aside and so did Jacob. Who was his, who was, who did Jacob want to be his heir? Joseph, which was of his beloved wife. Now, this happened before this. I want you to understand. This is later. Jacob did what he did before this was ever written. The law wasn't in existence yet. The son of the unloved, who is the firstborn, number 17, but he shall acknowledge the firstborn, the son of the unloved, by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he is the beginning of his strength, and to him belongs the right of the firstborn. The right of the firstborn today is in God's churches. The right of the firstborn. Do you have any questions? Sharon, you got a question? Young lady, do you have a question? How about it, Christine? Does this give you too much today? No. This is too much? Brother Roger, Marilyn, Brother Ray, do you have a question? A lot of notes? All right. Let's go out and do something eternal. Sharon, would you dismiss us in prayer, please? Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this gathering. And I ask that you bless us all as we go uh, about our business. 
and that you keep us all safe and uh, when we regather again. In Jesus' name.